All right, so we're going to be taking a look at LU decomposition. That's uh, decomposition to lower and upper matrices uh, using a method that involves full pivoting. And uh, what we're going to be using is uh, the Gauss elimination method with full pivoting. So let's write that here. And essentially what the Gauss elimination method is, is it's a uh, set of row operations in order to simply uh, decompose the uh, matrix to give an upper matrix and the factors that are used on uh, each element of the rows uh, forms a lower matrix, which I'll explain that a little bit uh, as we go through this. But uh, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using the same matrix as I uploaded in my previous video in which we uh, derived LU decomposition uh, simply by using direct formulae. Uh, in this uh, example here we're going to be using uh, pivoting matrix or uh, a row permutation matrix in order to swap rows up and down uh, as well as uh, as well as uh, row operations in which we uh, subtract one row from another for example so let's uh, let's actually just get started with this uh, just a quick note uh, we're going to be using the row permutation matrix such that uh, our permutation matrix times matrix A produces a modified matrix we'll call it a prime uh, if we were to do that the other way around, we would simply be swapping columns. Uh, basically, our permutation matrix is going to be starting off as the identity matrix, uh, only we're going to be swapping the rows around. So, for example, this, and that's going to produce a new row permutation matrix, which can be uh, pre-multiplied by matrix A. Uh, so we're just going to uh, keep that in mind as we go through this. Uh, I'll explain again as we go along. Let's just get started here with the uh, first uh, step. So in the uh, Gauss elimination method with full pivoting, we want to make sure that our matrix row that we're working on currently has the uh, largest number in its uh, first element. Uh, so for this example here, our first row is going to have four elements and the first element can either be a 3, a 6, a 0, or a 1. Well in this case the 6 is going to be the largest uh, possible entry for that row. So we're going to swap these two rows as our first operation and uh, the pivot matrix for that is uh, going to look something like this which as you can see it is simply the identity matrix except these uh, first two rows have been swapped. So if we multiply P times matrix A what we get is something like this and uh, in the Gauss elimination method, uh, one of the first uh, the first operation that we do once we get the matrix formatted the way that we want it is uh, we take this first column, this first element, and we make the other elements on the uh, first element of the row, we want to make these all equal to zero. So we have to subtract some multiple of this first row from all of these other rows in order to do so. And uh, in doing this, we get the uh, lower matrix where we get the uh, factors for the lower matrix such that the diagonals are always going to be 1 because uh, we're not subtracting anything from this first row. The second row we're going to be subtracting we're going to be subtracting 3 times 1 over 6 which is going to be 1 over 2. Uh, now of course we haven't actually formed this uh, lower matrix just yet so currently our lower matrix looks uh, looks something like this. We have our first row which we're not subtracting anything from. Now we're going to have this uh, second row here, this 3705. We're subtracting 1 over 2 from the uh, 3705 to get that equal to 0. For the uh, third row here we're subtracting 0 because it's already a 0 in that uh, first column there. And in the last row we're subtracting uh, 1 6 times 6 which is going to be uh, the factor that this row is multiplied by when we subtract it. Uh, thus we're going to have a 1 sixth on this bottom row. And uh, we'll just write that out here specifically what we're doing. We're going to be doing uh, row 3, or row 2, minus 1 half of row 1. We're going to be doing row 3 minus 0 of row 1 and we're going to be doing row 4 minus 1 6 
of row one. So essentially the row one, that's this top row here, that's what we're currently working with. We're trying to make all other elements in this uh, first column equal to zero, such that this uh, first row is the only one that has an element in the first column. Uh, so if we uh, go ahead and apply this here, and uh, again, just to note here, uh, this first row is being multiplied by uh, this factor, one half, zero, or one sixth, and uh, we're subtracting it from these other rows. So row two minus one half of row one. Since this is a one, we're subtracting one half from uh, 14, or, uh, one half from seven, sorry. We're subtracting one half from the seven, which is giving us 13 halves. We're subtracting one half from zero, that's giving us negative one half. And uh, for this uh, bottom row, we're subtracting one sixth of row one. So we're doing uh, one minus one sixth of six, which is zero. So it's just one minus one. We have uh, eight minus one sixth, which is 47 sixths, and uh, so forth through the rest of that row. Next, we're gonna take a look at this uh, second row and uh, what operations need to be done to that. But we need to note on the second row here, which of these elements is uh, the largest value such that we can apply the pivoting. So uh, just a cursory look at these numbers uh, suggests that this bottom row has the uh, largest number showing in the uh, second column. So we're going to be swapping that with uh, our current second row such that again we have the largest number occurring in the second column on the second row. We want the largest numbers to occur on that uh, main diagonal there. So the uh, row permutation matrix, we'll call that P2, is going to look something like this. And uh, that's basically such that if we pre-multiply P2 by the current matrix that we have, we will uh, simply be swapping these two rows. So what we're going to end up with, and uh, we also need to note that for our uh, lower matrix now, since we've swapped rows, we also have to swap these factors around. So the first row remains the same. We haven't changed anything. Uh, the second row is becoming one sixth. And uh, now we have a one here, because we're not subtracting anything else from this row. The third row, uh, we still haven't added any additional factors to that just yet. The uh, final row is gonna be that one half that we had before because now we've uh, swapped these two rows around. So our uh, lower matrix has a slightly different format now. We're going to keep that uh, following updated as we uh, go along. But uh, let's update this matrix now. The next uh, operation that we need to do exactly the same as before. We're uh, making the rest of this uh, column equal to zero. So we need to subtract a factor of this uh, row from the next uh, two rows. And that's going to fill in these two parts of our lower matrix. So we're going to do row three, and we're going to subtract two times, well in this case for the, uh, for the third row here. And uh, now we have the two factors to uh, enter into our lower matrix here. That's going to be uh, 12 47ths. And uh, this is going to be something like um, 39 47ths. And uh, now we update our matrix here. And uh, now we're on the last row. There isn't any additional pivoting that needs to be done. Uh, so essentially what we're just doing is we're subtracting a multiple of row 3 from row 4 such that the uh, column number 3 is uh, equal to 0. So essentially And uh, this gives us the final factor to enter into our lower matrix here. Let's complete that L matrix. Note that we have a 1 here because we're uh, not modifying row 3 any further uh, for the last row. Uh, negative 19 over 52 is what this expression equates to. Uh, so this completes our lower matrix, uh, which is of course pivoted given the uh, 
given the row permutation matrix that has been applied to both of these. And our uh, final matrix, which we're going to call U, and this gives us our upper matrix. And uh, finally we need to identify our row permutation matrix. That is the uh, effective matrix that is pre-multiplied by our original A matrix in order to get this into the uh, format that we solved it in. Uh, so if we recognize our row permutation, this is our, I'll call that P1, our first row permutation was swapping the first two rows. So we had uh, effectively we had matrix A which was pre-multiplied by permutation matrix P1 and then at a later point we applied another row uh, we applied another row swap which gave us a second permutation matrix P2 which was again pre-multiplied so therefore our effective permutation matrix is going to be P times A such that P equals P2 P1 which is going to be equal to the multiplication of these two permutation matrices 1 0 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 and 0 1 0 0 that's our P2 multiplied by matrix P1 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 and uh, basically we just multiply these two together and this is the effective permutation matrix which uh, when multiplied by matrix A results in uh, the matrix being arranged such that we can apply uh, Gauss elimination without having to do additional pivots. This is effectively the uh, all the pivoting that we've done with that matrix. Now if we wanted to uh, get matrix A back uh, traditionally with LU decomposition matrix A would be equal to uh, matrix L times matrix U basically your lower and upper matrices multiplied by one another however since we've applied pivoting we have this row permutation matrix uh, such that P times A is equal to our LU so in other words we need to pre multiply by the inverse of our pivot matrix P inverse uh, P inverse times P uh, by the definition of the inverse that's going to be the identity matrix or in other words matrix A is simply equal to P inverse times matrix L times matrix U and another interesting property of the inverse here since the uh, pivot matrix matrix P is simply a product of uh, row swap or uh, row operations off of the identity matrix we can additionally say that P inverse is simply equal to the transpose of matrix P uh, which makes it very easy to uh, to solve a, an LU decomposition problem such as this now we have a very easy way to invert our pivot matrix so uh, let's write this out in final form here or, you know what let's uh, write this out in the uh, form that we would have uh, if we were doing this on a computer uh, so for a computer the way that it's going to store the memory is it's going to store it all in a single matrix such that you're going to have your upper matrix elements up here and uh, that's going to be split down the middle you're going to have your lower matrix elements down here that's simply to save memory because all the other elements in this is going to be either zero or in case of the uh, lower matrix that main diagonal is just a one so the uh, final form that we'll write this in will have uh, matrix upper here and lower here and we're just going to write them all in the same uh, space here And again, this uh, we can basically split this down the middle here, such that this is our lower matrix, this is our upper matrix, and we need to just note that the lower matrix has a main diagonal. Uh, each element in that is equal to one. And uh, this is a more efficient way of uh, of storing these values. Some people will actually write it out this way. Uh, basically, if you're using any uh, any uh, programming language such uh, such as Fortran you have the uh, memory allocated for the matrix already uh, you don't want to have to allocate new memory to store a lower matrix you just use the existing matrix and uh, pop the values in there and that makes it uh, much more efficient in terms of the uh, memory usage there so uh, finally we have that permutation matrix P 
which we uh, specified a little bit above here. Zero, one, zero, zero. And again, we need to uh, keep the information for that uh, permutation matrix in case we ever want to get uh, the original matrix back out of this or if we need to do uh, any additional operations on a specific row from the original matrix. So this basically defines which rows have been swapped with one another. So this uh, last element here is associated with the original first row. These uh, second elements here are associated with themselves. There's no change on the main diagonal from those. Uh, these values here, these uh, values in the second row, those are actually associated with the uh, last uh, element or the last uh, row of the original matrix and uh, the top line there is the uh, second row of the original matrix. So pivoting seems a little bit convoluted here but uh, this example doesn't uh, doesn't exactly highlight why you need pivoting uh, but if you had had uh, an issue where you were dividing by zero otherwise you would have to pivot or if you had uh, say for example in your original matrix up here if you had some value that was orders of magnitude higher than the rest of the elements in the matrix or in the uh, row being considered then you would have to uh, pivot the matrix such that the largest possible value is uh, is on that main diagonal once you're uh, once you're solving the uh, factors on that row. So this is the uh, Gauss elimination method for deriving the uh, lower and upper matrices. You have to remember that there's a uh, pivot applied there. Uh, so, so I'm the uh, Arlington matrix here and uh, thank you for watching the video. Please feel free to subscribe, like, or uh, leave, a uh, leave a comment or question in the section uh, down below. Thank you and have a great day.